And we're, we're looking at the Lord Jesus Christ, particularly in the past. Now, we're, we're looking at Christ uh, before the worlds were even made. And then we're going to look at him in, in the Old Testament as well. So we read there in John chapter 1, the Bible tells us very clearly, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. As you read the, the context of, of the scriptures down in verse 14, the Word was made flesh. It's talking about Jesus. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus didn't come into existence at Bethlehem. Not, not like us. You know, when we were born, that was, you know, that was our beginning. Uh, Jesus has always been God. Uh, Jesus is not a created being. You know, there are cults who try and say Jesus was an angel or Jesus was created. Verse, uh, verse 3, it says, all things were made by him. In case you couldn't understand that phrase, he gives you another one. And without him was not anything made that was made. You can't get any clearer than that. Jesus is not a made being. Jesus is the maker. He's the, he's the creator. Very important. In John chapter 8, Jesus was talking to the Jews and he makes a statement that for you or me would be very strange, but for him is just normal. John chapter 8, verse 56, he said to them, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. <laughs> well, their response is, thou art not yet 50 years old and hast thou seen Abraham? You know, it, like I said, if, if you or I made that statement, they'd think, oh, he's, he's nuts. Jesus said, his answer was, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And their response shows that they understood what he was saying. They took up stones to cast at him. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, there, there was a, they had a rule. Uh, you can't make yourself God. Well, Jesus wasn't making himself God. He is God. Uh, in, in John 17, when he was praying, he prayed things like, uh, Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Jesus existed before time. Later in that same prayer, he says, uh, For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Jesus and God, one and the same. In Philippians chapter 2, it talks about the fact that Jesus is equal with God. He says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus wasn't grasping at something when he says he's the Lord that he's equal with God. Now, if you just think about it logically, only one being can be all-powerful. You can't have two people saying they're, they're all, they have all power. Only one can have all power. And Jesus makes that claim. God makes that claim because they're one and the same. We don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God with three persons. That's really important to understand. Uh, Jesus was active uh, in, in eternity past. Colossians puts it this way. I'm giving you lots of scriptures. You can just listen. If you want a list of these later, I'd be happy to help you. But Colossians 1, he says in verse 16, By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. You don't get a much more complete statement than that. Jesus is the creator. He not only was creating, he is keeping. Uh, we're going to look in Hebrews in just a minute, and there's a statement there where it says that Jesus is upholding all things by the word of his power. Upholding all things by the word of his power. Some years ago, they learned how to unleash the power of the atom. And we talk about atomic energy. Very powerful, uh, you know, I can't even go like that and say that, you know, that's an atom. An atom is it's microscopic, isn't it? Imagine how much power is in an atom and then in all the atoms. And, you know, there's a, there's a theory that they've come up with now called dark energy. You heard of that? Dark matter. Someone made this statement and said, we understand everything about the universe except for dark energy. Well, they, say, they think that dark energy is about 85 to 95% of the universe. So what they're saying is we don't understand much about the universe. <laughs> but listen to, look it up on Wikipedia. It's, it's, almost, it's almost comical. Uh, dark matter is a hypothetical form of matter. It, its presence is implied, it says in another place. Um, dark matter has not been observed directly. And here, here's a statement. 
The primary evidence for dark matter is that calculations show that many galaxies would fly apart instead of rotating or would not have formed or moved as they do if they did not contain a large amount of unseen matter. Well, I think what they're trying to find is God. He's the one who holds our universe together. And he's not dark, he's light. <laughs> it, it, just, it almost makes me laugh if it wasn't so tragic that they're missing the point of life and eternity. Uh, it's not dark matter, uh, it's, it's God. Turn to Hebrews chapter one with me if, if you would. Uh, it says there, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Hebrews chapter 1, we, we see Jesus before the world was. Here in Hebrews 1 and verse 1, we see Jesus we prophesied in the Old Testament. Now for us, the Old Testament is history. It's, it's before our time, well before our time. Now verse 1, Hebrews 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in times, time past unto the fathers by the prophets. This book starts with the word God. I've noticed something. No author sets out to prove their own existence. Now, I've never read a book where the author is trying to prove that they exist. And God is no different. When God writes a book, he doesn't try to prove that he exists. He just writes. And uh, as God writes here in, in the book of, of Hebrews, uh, we see that God is able to speak. He's spoken in many ways and in, in many different times and many manners uh, by the prophets. And in the Old Testament are at least and more than, I should say, there are more than 300 prophecies about the coming Messiah, about Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled them all. God has spoken. <clears throat> Jesus was prophesied. And it says then in verse 2, God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down in the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus Christ, now he is prophesied right through scripture. And when he had done what he had said he would do, he sat down on the cross. He was able to say, it is, it is finished. Uh, many different prophecies. We won't look at them all. Uh, there's a, a sheet at the back there that if you want to take it home today that lists, oh, I think maybe 10 or 20 of them that you could, you could look at. But one that uh, comes to mind is Isaiah 7, verse 14, when it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in the passage he says, this is going to be a sign. This is the one. And the, the name Emmanuel means God with us. God said a virgin would, would conceive. A savior, the virgin birth. Jesus fulfilled that. He, uh, he indicated in the book of Genesis that he would be of Abraham. In Genesis 12, when God makes a promise with Abraham, he says to him, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And the way we've been blessed is that Jesus came through Abraham. If, if you're reading the book of Matthew, it starts with Jesus' genealogy. It says, the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then it starts with Abraham and goes right to Joseph and Mary. And Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. In uh, Micah 5.2, it tells us that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. He's very specific. He says, thou Bethlehem Ephrata. There's more than one Bethlehem. There's Bethlehems in the United States. There's probably some here in Australia. I don't know. Bethlehem Ephrata. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. A couple of things there. Not only would Jesus be born in, in Bethlehem, but it talks about the fact that, that he's eternal. He steps out of eternity to, uh, to come to, to Bethlehem. Uh, this verse is why, do you, do you remember when the, uh, the wise men came and wanted to know about the you know, they'd seen the signs and the stars and, and so on. I find it interesting. It says they, they demanded of them where Christ should be born. You know, they came to, uh, to Israel and they said, where's the Christ going to be born? And 
the people were able to tell them because they quoted Micah 5 2. They said, In Bethlehem, for thus it is written by the prophet. And, and they just quote to them Micah 5 2. And so they go to, to Bethlehem. You see, well before Jesus was ever born, uh, the Old Testament spoke of, of who he would be. He came uh, out of eternity, the Bible says, whose goings forth had been from of old. So many things. Uh, we won't. Take, we can't take the time this morning to look at every one of them. Uh, the Bible tells us, the Old Testament, the gifts that would be given to Jesus, uh, that he would be in Galilee, uh, how he would die. It's interesting, it prophesies of crucifixion before crucifixion took place. Uh, it tells us about John the Baptist. Uh, it tells us about his betrayal, about people's even reactions and, and the looks on their faces as they... Uh, uh, Go to the crucifixion. You know, the Old Testament, like I said, over 300 things that it told us about this coming Christ. And Jesus fulfilled all of those prophecies. Hath, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. It says, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. You see, it's, it's his program. Life is about what God is doing. You know, we have the Old Testament and the New Testament in the Bible. The Old Testament points forward to the coming of Christ. The New Testament points back to his coming, but says he's coming again. It's all about him. It's his, it's his program. It's not enough to believe in God, folks. You realize that the Bible says the devil believes in God. And the devil knows there's a God. We come to God through Jesus. It's all about Jesus. In Romans 11, he says, Of him, through him, and to him are all things whom be glory forever. The angels in, in heaven in Revelation 4 will say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. It's all about Jesus. It's His program. There in verse 2 of Hebrews 1, it says, By whom also He made the worlds. It's interesting that that word worlds there, now we, we know Jesus created everything everything physical and so on. That word world has to do with periods of time. It has to do with his purpose. What God is doing in the first thousand years and the second thousand years and, and so on. Now, Jesus is working out his purpose and his program through time. Now, there's a verse in Galatians where it says, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. You see, it's, it's about his timing. When the fullness of time was come, Jesus came at just the right time. Uh, there's another verse in uh, Ephesians says, in, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. It's talking about Jesus' second coming. Jesus will come again when it's his time. It's his program. It's his, uh, it's his purpose. Uh, he came. He's coming again. There in verse 3 of Hebrews 1, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. The Bible makes a statement, no man has seen God. In, in, in a sense, it's like the sun. You, know, you don't really see the sun, but you see the brightness of the sun. We see Jesus. He's the, the, the physical, the image. He's the, uh, the express image of his, of his person. In Colossians chapter 2, it says, In him, that's in Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus, we have the Lord of glory. Uh, we sang this morning, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Uh, one of the verses says, Adam's likeness now efface. That means we need to get rid of Adam's image, stamp thine image in its place. We need the image of the Lord. We need to be like Jesus. We're born in Adam. That's a family we got to get out of. <laughs> and we need to be in the family of God. We need to be uh, in, in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. So we see in Jesus, it's his program, it's his purpose, uh, it's his person. And then as, as we saw there in, in verse 3, and upholding all things by the word of his power. He's the preserver. Without the Lord, things would just fly apart. Yeah, our, our worlds generally don't fly apart. I don't know how fast the earth is turning, but it's, it's turning pretty quick, you know, folks. And we don't fly off. 
And God holds it together by the word of his power. He's always done that. Past, present, and future. Jesus is the eternal God. We see his work in eternity past, before creation. We see his work in the Old Testament. The, the Bible uh, tells us many things about the Christ who would come. And we see his eternal being, in one sense, by his names. And Je really, Jesus maybe official name would be Jesus Christ the Lord. Now, that's his full name. Now there's many others, as we'll see. Jesus Christ the Lord. In Matthew 121, I think it's the angel speaking to Joseph. And the angel says, talking about Mary, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means Jehovah our Savior. And what he's saying is, uh, this is the Savior. This is the one who's coming. It's his earthly name. It's a name of, you might say, humiliation and suffering. Jesus, the Savior. In John 1, 41, one of the men, uh, Andrew, I think it was, had met Jesus, and he goes to tell Simon. And he says to him, we have found the Messiah. And I'm not sure if he said this to his brother or if this is just something that uh, God put for us, which is being interpreted the Christ. I'm not sure why he'd say that to his brother because they both, both would have known that. But uh, I found the Messiah, he said. It's the Christ. Christ means Messiah. It, it's an Old Testament word. Uh, it, and it, I find it interesting that that's the name we're called by. You know, we're not called Jesus ones or something like that. We're called Christians. The Messiah, the, the Savior. We're, we're followers of, of the Christ. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Lord means master. I hope you know that. And in Romans chapter 10 and, and many places, it relates that without understanding that Jesus is Lord, we can't be saved. Romans 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, the Lord. And then just a few verses down, he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, I've noticed that uh, sometimes people avoid the name of Jesus. Are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I believe in God. Well, we need to believe in Jesus. We come to God through Jesus. He's the Lord. Uh, for you to be a Christian, Jesus has to be your Lord. Now, you may not live like he's your Lord. You, there may be times when you, uh, you don't uh, do everything right. But for you to be saved, he's got to be your Lord. He is the Lord, but it needs to be personal. There's many other names of Jesus. Uh, like we read in John 8, 58, before Abraham was, I am. He's the great I am. There's many times when Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the bread of life. I'm the light of the world, the good shepherd, the door, the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the great I am. When Moses asked, what can I tell the nation of Israel? Who can I tell the nation of Israel has sent me? God said, tell them I am sent you. And that's, that's who Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. In uh, Luke 1, <clears throat> Mary was being addressed, and the angel said to her, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Son of God. Uh, later in uh, the, the book of John, I, I, I thought it would be interesting for you to hear this statement. It's John 19, verse 7. The Jews are talking to Pilate. They said, we have a law. And by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. You know, there's people who say, oh, Jesus never claimed to be God. Of course he did. That's why they put him to death. He said, I am. He said I, that he's, he's the Lord. He's, he's the son of God. The angels proclaimed him as such. Uh, of course he, he's the Son of God. It's not just a title for him. It's who he is. 
He's the Son of God, and He has been for all eternity. The Bible says He's the only begotten. We can become children of God through salvation. He is salvation. He's the way, the truth, and the life. There's so many more. Uh, we mentioned Emmanuel, God with us. That's Jesus. He's the only begotten Son. There's some wonderful ones. Uh, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Uh, the ones in Isaiah, he's wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hey, you can go on and on, can't you? Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. He's the Ancient of Days. He's the Son of Abraham. Sometimes in the New Testament, they'd cry out, Jesus, thou Son of David. They knew who he was. Rabbi, Master. He's the great high priest. He's the branch. He's the stone. He's the redeemer. The, the key this morning is, who is he to you? Who is he to you? Have you recognized him as the Lord of glory? Have you recognized him as, as, the, as the Savior? Is he your Savior? Listen, whether you claim him or not, he's the Savior. But for your sake, it's so important for you to understand that truth. You know, there were people who saw Jesus walking on this earth. And some responded to him one way, some another. Now, there were Pharisees who, it didn't matter what Jesus said, they weren't going to believe him. Jesus said, I tell you the truth and you won't believe me. But there are others who, with, at the least excuse, would believe him. You know, they, they didn't have much. They, they didn't have the completed scriptures like we do. And yet they believed. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me ask, is he your Savior today? He can be. We read there in Hebrews, when he had by himself purged our sins. He's paid for your sins. Why not claim him as your Savior? In John, we read, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Many has received him. To them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. What a wonderful Savior. Uh, born of God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Have you been born of God? You can be today. Now, we're going to take our song books and go to page 159. It's the song, Jesus, I Come. And maybe today you need to trust Christ as your Savior. Now, we're going to look this week and the next few weeks at just things in the scriptures about the Lord Jesus. He was before the Bible. He's in the Old Testament. Uh, next week we'll look at some other things. But uh, this morning, Jesus, I Come. Ezra, why don't you come and leave?